Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. As proudly we hail Albert James Meyer, soldier, founder of the United States Weather Bureau. Our story is entitled, Prophet with Honor, and is based on the career of General Albert J. Meyer, whose foresight and fight against public disinterest finally gave our Army and Air Force the vast network of signal communications now extending to every part of the globe. It was a difficult fight, as you will see, after this important message. Young man, why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Right now, your United States Army, the senior service, needs qualified technicians in such varied and interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, photography, and many, many others. Yes, you can be trained to do a job and acquire a skill that will be of great benefit to you for the rest of your life. You can also take pride in the fact that you answered your country's call in time of great need. Why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the United States Army. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Prophet with Honor. My name is Catherine Meyer. My husband used to say, quoting the Bible, It shall come to pass that your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. I knew Albert for years before he had a chance to make his visions materialize. I knew him even before he gave up private practice as a doctor to enter the army. I was Catherine Walden then. Albert and I were engaged to be married in 1858 when I was visiting friends at the army post where he was stationed. It must have been around 6.30 at night. As I recall, I was pretty angry. I went to Albert's office in the station hospital. I could hear loud voices I on the other side are. of the door, well, and I knocked. I Come in! Oh, Catherine. Hello, darling. What brings you here? Albert, Colonel Welbrick. Albert, I thought you were escorting me to Colonel and Mrs. Payne's for dinner tonight. Oh, my dear, I forgot. I... You forgot? Albert's been working on that memorandum to Washington again. About signal communication. Yes, dear, I got so engrossed in this new letter I'm sending to the Secretary of War, I suppose I forgot for the moment. Yeah, for the moment. You spent four years in college and four years in medical school to learn to be a doctor. For what? Because my dad wanted me to be a doctor. Well, then why all this nonsense about signal communication? Well, can't I change my mind about my own future? Are you intending to change your mind about me too, Albert? Oh, no, of course not, darling. I'll always love you. But now, he here, look at this practice telegraph key here. This was invented by a man named Samuel Morse. He started out to be an artist. But when he found out he'd never be a first-rate artist, he turned inventor. Like me, in surgery. I'm not 30 yet. My future is still ahead of me. Will you stop that? Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. I didn't know what annoyed you. Now, listen. Let me tell you something else. It had better be quick. All right. Now, one of my first assignments in the Army was in Texas. We used to sit on the side of a hill and watch the Indians send smoke signals to each other across the valleys. And what were our men doing? Fumbling around with wagon loads of colored pennants, the kind the Navy uses on its ships. All right, so I said to myself, why wouldn't it be more practical for the United States Army to take a page out of the Indian's book and cut down equipment to just one pole with a flag on top? 
Or maybe a torch for night. Albert. Well, now, look. Pretend this pen is a pole four or five feet long. Now, held in this position, it would mean A, like this B, and so on. Some positions could even stand for whole phrases. Now, for instance... So you decided to sell the government on the idea of simplifying and coordinating the whole army signal system. And you like the job. Well, I guess I have mentioned it before. Not more than 30 times. Well, we are 30 minutes late for dinner already. I'm going. And you needn't try wigwagging me. From now on, I'm way out of your sight. Wigwag. Wigwag, that's a good word for it. Goodbye. No, wait, Kathy, I'm coming. Albert and I were married in that same year, 1858. And if I thought Albert would change with marriage, I had anticipated far too much. He still carried a torch, but not one that burned brightly with any flame of love. It was a signal torch, which no one was able to ignite for him. There were brief flutters of the flame he sought. The time he heard that a military board had been authorized to consider his plan for simplifying the army signal system, but the fire that had flickered for a moment blacked out again. As for medicine, that was the furthest thing from his thoughts. He just wasn't meant to be a doctor. The endless backaches, sore throats, and flat feet were just too much for his preoccupied soul. But, doctor, my back hurts awful bad. It's nothing but a slight touch of lumbago, Corporal. Take two of these pills every four hours. You'll be all right. And go back to duty? Back to duty. Oh. Uh, come in. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't... It's all right, Catherine. Come on in. Is that all, sir? Yes, that's all, Corporal. Yes, sir. More backaches, darling? Yes, backaches and flat feet. Y you got a letter. Hmm. I thought you might want to see it, so I brought it over. Where's it from? Washington. Here. Yes, Form you to proceed without delay to Washington, D.C., reporting upon arrival to the office of the Secretary of War for further assignment by order of the Secretary of War. Well, what does it mean, Albert? It means this may be it. Come on, darling, let's get going. Now, uh, just keep calm, Kathy. Everything's going to be all right. Yes, dear. I'll send for you just as soon as I find out what's what. Uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. Yes, dear. Oh, now, uh, uh, don't forget to bring my telegraph key when you come. I won't, dear. Now, let me think if there's anything else. Uh... Albert. Yes? I have something to say, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, what is it? You keep calm, too. Me? Why shouldn't I keep calm? I know it's been a long time. You've been angry at me lots of times in the past two years when you've had all this on your mind. Please, darling... Don't be angry at the secretary. <laughs> no, I won't, darling. Oh, well, there we are. Goodbye. I'll see you within the week in Washington. I hope so, Albert. And God bless you. And don't worry, darling. He will. Now, this is how it works, Mr. Secretary. Let's pretend that this uh, pen here on your desk is a four- or five-foot pole with a flag on top. And the message sender holds it like this, and it means A. Like this, B. And if he should... I know, Captain, I've read your memoranda. Oh, you have? Now let's get down to cases. The uh, Congress of the United States has seen fit to add one signal officer to our staff here. Why, I don't know. We've gotten on pretty well so far with that one. Yes, but you don't understand, sir. I that... understand perfectly. Now then, the act authorizes you the rank and pay of major. Is that satisfactory? Yes, sir, for a start. For a start? Well, I have a lot of other ideas. Well, you, you don't say. Yes, sir, for instance, I think that... This is Friday, Major Meyer. Can you find a place over the weekend for you and your family to live? Uh, well, I hope so. Very well. Report back Monday morning, and Sergeant McKelvin and the Chief of Staff's office will find space for you here. Good day, and uh, good luck. Thank you, sir. This is your office, Major Meyer. This is my office, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Well, at least you'll have a nice view of Washington Monument, if they ever get around to finishing it. What about my staff? What staff, sir? There's no room in here except for me. 
You don't think I can coordinate signals throughout the whole United States Army without somebody to help me, do you? Oh, I'm sorry, Major, but my orders mention no space for a staff. Oh, now I see. Well, did they even authorize me a chair to sit in? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, here you are, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. Is there anything else, sir? No, nothing, Sergeant. Just tell them to resume work on Washington's monument so I'll have something to look at. <laughs> Major Meyer reporting to the secretary. Oh, come in, Major. Come in. Have a chair. Sit down. Thank you, sir. If I may use the vernacular, I am completely boxed in and something has to be done about it. Do you want me to talk to you as a friend, Major? Well, I'd appreciate it. You probably disliked me from the way I treated you last week. I liked you the minute you walked in the door, but I didn't want you to get up any hopes. When Congress created your job, they made no provision for anybody to help you. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Until Congress does make provision, I can't do anything about it. We never had a signal service on the staff, so I presume Congress thinks we don't need one. Major, I suggest you request a transfer back to the Medical Corps. I want to be in signal, sir. Oh, in signal, sir. Eh? I haven't had a chance to look over this latest report from the Adjutant General. Well, let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Know anything about Navajo Indians? Well, I, uh, I served in Texas, not far away. You know you can still stay here by an act of Congress. I prefer the Navajos, sir. Very well. I'll pass this information along. Your order should be ready about the day after tomorrow. I saw Albert when we pulled into Washington Terminal before he saw me. I wondered why he was carrying a kit bag. Oh, my darling. Hello, Kathy. Is this your luggage? Yes, but... uh, Porter, take these bags to the uh, hack entrance. But where are you going? Why are you in such a hurry? New Mexico, darling. My train's oh. leaving right now. Now, you remember the address on Northwest Q Street? It's the front apartment on the second floor. Oh, but, darling... The I... soaps are in the kitchen cabinet, the towels are in the bath. And remember, I love you. Goodbye. Albert! Albert! <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production of Profit with Honor. We'll return to our story in just a moment. It shall not happen here. That is the unspoken prayer of every man in the United States Army. That is the unspoken reason for our growing military might. But the time has come to speak. The time has come to tell of that small phrase, those five words, it shall not happen here. Let us speak only to those young men of America who have not taken pause to think. Let's shout it in a voice that will reach into every city and village across the length and breadth of this great land. Young, Young man, man, you, you are, are needed. needed. You, you are needed, needed to help preserve, preserve the peace. peace. You, you are, are needed, needed to serve, to serve in your United, United States, States Army, Army to ensure, ensure for your loved ones, ones that it shall not happen here. here. You are urged to visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today, and enlist in the United States Army. The need is urgent. Do it today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the second act of the proudly we hail production, Profit with Honor. Albert only stayed in New Mexico a few months because shortly after he left, there was an explosion. It was the start of the war between the states. As a result of our conference here in Washington tonight, gentlemen, I gather we're all agreed upon the need for organized signal services in the present emergency. Furthermore, we seem agreed that the one man to handle it at this critical moment, upon the recommendation of the Secretary of War, is a Major Albert J. Meyer, who is the only one up to now who has shown wholehearted interest in it. I assume, then, that this body recommends his recall from General Canby's command in New Mexico to handle the job. Aye. 
So Albert came back to me in Washington, in the front door one moment, out the back door the next. Good afternoon, Captain. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, Lieutenant. Good afternoon. Well, the last time I held a meeting in this office, there was me and no one else. <laughs> I was a majority, plurality, and unanimous vote all rolled into one. They didn't want a signal service as a separate, defined unit in here. They gotten along so far with a helter-skelter of different signal procedures in as many divisions as there are scattered from Maine to Texas, so why change? You know the saying in the Bible, old men dream dreams, young men see visions? Yes, sir. Old Testament, isn't it? Well, that was a good guess, Lieutenant. Anyway, I still consider myself as one of the young men with vision. And while I hate to take advantage of an all-out war to press a point, I still think that signals are important enough to be considered as a separate branch, along with combat and supply, and that all the signal services, from wigwagging to the telegraph, should be coordinated along the line, from the War Department in West Point to the last squad and the last rank in the Junction City Home Guards. Now, that's my basic idea, gentlemen. Do you agree? I do, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we three are probably the smallest military unit on the face of the earth at this point. Uh, do we have anyone in the outside office yet? They gave us a stenographer this morning. Well, now there are four of us. But don't you count our people in the field, Major? You mean signal personnel in addition to other duties? Well, uh, yes. Captain, I think the handling of communications is a full-size job and deserves full-size recognition as such, particularly here in Washington. Now, our job is a big one, and it's going to be bigger. We need more qualified personnel than we have now. That's why I want you, Captain, to hit every post, camp, station, division, and brigade from New England to the Mississippi and set up signal schools. Set up schools, sir? Well, it's a good chance to exercise your ingenuity, isn't it? Yes, but I'm... Now, I know. You're essentially a technician working with Samuel Morse and his telegraph. But if you can master that, you can master anything else. Now, uh, do you know anything about wigwagging? Wigwag? What's that? <laughs> well, the name is my wife's. The idea is mine. It's a method of signal communication that I've developed. I may sound silly, but it sure saved a lot of lives when I was out in New Mexico recently. I want every unit in this whole army to know the same code. You'll have to teach me, sir. Teach you? I intend to make you thoroughly sick of the whole business before you're through. Oh, and by the way... Uh... Yes, sir? While you're calling on all those camps and stations, you might inquire about qualified telegraph operators. Wouldn't be a bad idea for the Army to have a tactical system of its own. Well, what are you going to use to send it on? Oh, I think I can find a little wire. And... How much? Five or 10,000 miles worth. Well, now you're talking my language, sir. Well, what about me, sir? Where do I come into the picture? Well, you're going to stay right here, Lieutenant. You're going to be my stand-in. Your voice is my voice. And as for me, I'm going with the Army of the Potomac. I want to show them what a separate signal corps can do. Heaven knows Albert was willing enough. Albert was brave. They wouldn't have made him a lieutenant colonel after the battles of Hanover Courthouse and Malvern Hill if he hadn't been. It was that 5,000 miles of wire that did it. One evening, when he happened to be home from the front, there was a knock at the door. My husband answered it. Colonel Meyer? Yes, I'm Colonel Meyer. What do you want? I'm George Gillespie from the Assistant Secretary's office. Oh, come in, Mr. Gillespie. I have some papers for you, Colonel. First, about that 5,000-mile communications network. Secretary thinks there's been some mistake. I understand. You're Gillespie with the Military Telegraph Service? That's right, Colonel. Mr. Gillespie, the secretary and I have discussed this time and time again. Can't you understand that we're tactical and you're purely administrative? Just the same, Colonel. We're taking over your 5,000 miles of wire. These are the papers backing it up. These? What are these? Orders. Relieving you of your command. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Meyer, Captain Riley, Lieutenant Fulton. Reconnaissance of the Mississippi River. Who engineered this? I wouldn't know, sir. I'm just a clerk. Just a clerk dropping in to pay his chief's respects, I suppose. You might put it that way, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, I return the courtesy. And you can tell the secretary that the captain, the lieutenant, and myself have not received our orders as yet. Until we do, we intend to keep a tight hold on the reins as well as those 5,000 miles of wire. Good night, sir. I'm so sorry, dear. Sorry for whom, Catherine? 
Those orders were official, all right. My copies will probably reach me in the morning. I'm going west with you, Albert. No, no. No, you aren't. You're going to stay here and keep this house running. Because I will return. Albert returned from the Mississippi. A brigadier general, no less. Of course, it was only temporary, a brevet rank. But those stars on his shoulders looked good to me. So long as he could wear them, I was proud of my husband. Then, shortly after the last shot of the war was fired, Albert's perseverance began to pay dividends. Who do you think made personal recommendations to Congress? None other than General Philip Sheridan and General Ulysses S. Grant. Gentlemen, if there's one thing that the war between the states taught us, it's the need for a separate signal service on a par with all the other combat services and services of supply. I'm not saying that we didn't have sufficient signal personnel, but sometimes they reminded me of the sons and grandsons of Noah in the Old Testament. They were all trying to do the same job, to build a tower of Babel. But there was a confusion of tongues. Many and many a time, they weren't speaking the same language. Gentlemen, the signal services must be coordinated under one command. And the one to do it is Albert James Meyer. With an adequate staff to do the job that has to be done. Albert James Meyer, with the authority invested in me, I proclaim you the first Chief Signal Officer of the United States Army Signal Corps. May you meet the many challenges it offers. And God bless you. Thank you, General Sheridan. The only ironic thing about it was that it dropped Albert back to Colonel again. That's what the job called for. But I was just as proud of him, if not prouder. He'd finally won out. And I was especially happy about that one little phrase, an adequate staff to do the job. Now he could relax a little, or at least that's what I thought at the time. It was the night of the hurricane. Albert and I were invited out to dinner, but a bad storm came out of nowhere. The roads were flooded. Albert stood at the window watching it. I don't know why you keep saying, Catherine, that the storm came out of nowhere. Well, for me it did. But storms don't come out of nowhere. They have to start somewhere. Well, this one's certainly ruined tonight. No. It gives me an idea. Hmm, what? I have an idea. Oh, no, Albert. No more ideas, please. It's been a long time. It's been a hard time. Well, I seem to recall those words from someplace before him. When you were leaving for Washington the first time. June the 26th, 1860. If you're keeping a diary. We have everything we need. You've gotten where you wanted to go. So if I could only sell some congressmen on this idea. Oh, Albert! All right, don't worry, darling. This time, it's going to be different. Now, gentlemen, we know from research carried on by the Smithsonian Institution before the war, and before circumstances beyond their control limited their activities, that they found out that storms follow pretty much of a pattern. Prolonged good and bad weather comes from the northwest and southwest. Hurricanes from Florida. Blizzards from eastern and central Canada. Agreed? Therefore, by the same token, if we had known the night before last what the weather was in other places, we could have anticipated the deluge that hit us here in Washington. Now, I have a suggestion to make. As chief of the United States Army Signal Corps, I have some 24 stations spread over the face of this country. I have 5,000 miles of telegraph wire connecting them, which uh, 
incidentally, I had to fight to get and fight to keep. Now, why can't I give my personnel in each of these stations one small additional duty every day to report the weather in their own locality? We could gather all the data here in Washington, plot weather movements, and granted your permission to establish a coordinating agency, send weather forecasts to every part of the United States. We could even call it the United States Weather Bureau. It turned out just the way Albert said it would. It was different this time. He started with those 24 Signal Corps stations. By the time he died in 1880, as a brigadier general again, I might add, there were over a hundred. You know, when I think about that phrase he used to repeat. Your young men shall see visions. I know now that he was a young man until the day he died. Very aptly put, Mrs. Meyer, but a bit of an understatement. Albert Meyer was the father of the Weather Bureau, now under the Department of Agriculture, the Bureau which forewarns farmers against floods and hurricanes, as well as sailors against the storms out at sea. He was primarily responsible, too, for our present streamlined system of Signal Corps communications on a worldwide basis, second to none. The Signal Corps, his vision, serves you and me in both peace and war. Today, in the very shadows of the nation's capital, there is a military post helping to guard our national future. That post bears the name Fort Albert J. Meyer. That tribute was earned. Plan ahead to get ahead. There's sound advice for you young men of America. And here's how you can act on that advice. Your United States Army is offering a bright future in such interesting technical fields as radio, radar, electronics, mechanics, meteorology, photography, and many, many others. Perhaps you're not qualified in any of these urgently needed skills. Well, here's the answer to that. The United States Army, through its many fine technical schools, is prepared to train you in the field for which you show an aptitude. Now there's a great opportunity, your opportunity to plan ahead, to get ahead. For full details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Bureau for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.